Good evening and welcome to prayer meeting, Wednesday night prayer meeting. My name is Don Mast and I'm with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church located at 903 North 4th Street. And just want to take this moment and just thank you for joining us this evening. I'm glad you're here with me. Uh, we started a, a moment late. It's funny too because I have a dog is the opening photo and uh, our dog decided to go for a run. Um on its way to get groomed and so we had to go out and chase him so it made for a fun start to the evening but um i'm glad that you're here with me and if you're new to wednesday prayer meeting each week i share a short lesson from the word of god and then we pray and i'm really here to kind of challenge you and you know i, I want to get your heart to beat a little harder i want i want to push you a bit i want you to uh be thinking and and, and i want your heart to be stirred up and so I have a little story to kind of start off our prayer meeting this evening, and it's about a dog. The dog story is, is about, the, well, I'll just tell you the title, Greater Love Hath No Dog, right? And it's, it's really talking about sacrificial love. And so there's a story of a man and maybe his whole family who their best friend was a loyal dog. And about four years ago, this, this farmer family from India took in this stray dog and affectionately named him Jackie. And recently the farmer was allegedly sleeping outdoors and the dog sensed a presence of a tiger nearby. And the dog started to bark and started to get real excited um, about, you know, this, this tiger. And what we ended up finding out here is, you know, th this dog decided to protect his family. You know, so, so while the dog was trying to distract this tiger, the man reached, uh, uh, reached safety successfully. But villagers later found the body of the dog who had given his life so that the owner could have his. And so Jackie returned what was a favor, you know, that, that, that this gentleman would give him a few Indian flatbread every day. And, and this dog gave up his life to save his farmer and to save his family. And, and the farmer said, I wish that humans could learn from it and, and, and how to, to love others and to show devotion. And so this past week, or this past Sunday, if you were at church with us or if you watched our sermon online, we talked about 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. And we were talking about this incredible relationship, this incredible friendship between David and Jonathan. And I encouraged everyone to, to be a Jonathan. And so if you haven't, if, if you weren't able to, to attend church this Sunday, read 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4, about David and Jonathan's friendship. And the one thing that we really kind of understood is that, that, that like really how important the friends we have in our lives really are. And no matter how great a friend is, there is always going to be misunderstandings and disappointments and, and things like that. And so tonight I wanted to talk to you about our very best friend. And, you know, how do I want to start this? Okay. Human nature, you know, the nature of human relationships, I should say. Um, believers have friends who, you know, uh, I, I guess you want to say, let me just rephrase this. Okay. Believers have a friend who's superior to all other friends. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not only our creator, he's our sovereign ruler, he's our savior, he's our Lord, but our intimate friend as well. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And nothing could separate us from his love. And because of his awesome greatness, 
The idea of Jesus being our friend may be difficult to imagine, but he has no problem seeing us as his friends. And, and when he lived as a man on earth, he referred to many people as friend. And so there are a couple of, of scriptures that we can look at that kind of illustrate this, like Luke chapter 5, verse 19 through 20. And this is when some men who were bringing a paralyzed man to Jesus for healing couldn't get in the door. And so what they did is they let him down through a roof. And seeing their faith, Jesus responded, friend, your sins are forgiven. And then we look at Luke chapter 7, verse 33 and 34. The Pharisees and the Shadisees uh, were offended by Jesus because of his association with sinful people. They accused him of saying, Behold, a gluttonous man and a heavy drinker, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And then also we have Luke 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 4. On another occasion... Jesus said to his disciples, now I say to you, my friends, don't be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that have nothing, you know, after they have that, they have nothing more that they can do. And then we have Jonathan 11, or John, I should say, John chapter 11, verse 11. When Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus was sick. He told his disciples, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going so that I may awaken him from sleep. And then finally, we have Matthew chapter 26, verse 49 through 50. The most shocking instance in which Jesus called someone friend was when Judas was betraying him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you have come for. Then they came and they laid hands on Jesus and they arrested him. Wow. So we kind of see how Jesus is when, when it comes to you know, who he calls a friend. But let's talk about how he expresses his friendship. And that's when we get into John chapter 15, verse 12 through 17. And that's, you know, it's a wonderful description of how Christ demonstrates his friendship to us. Okay, so we're going to kind of walk through that tonight because he is our best friend, right? And so, you know, we begin with sacrificial love. Greater love has no one than this, that a person will lay down his life for his friends. There have always been people who've given their lives to save others, but Jesus' sacrifice is so much greater. When someone laid, lays down a life to save another, it's usually a spontaneous act in a moment of great danger. But in contrast, Jesus planned to give his life for us before the foundation of the world. He loved us before we were born and died on the cross to rescue us from sins while we were still his enemies. I mean, think about that. Unlike a person who dies to save a person physically, Jesus' death on the cross rescues us from eternal punishment and gives us eternal life. That's beautiful. And then... When we look at how he grows the relationships, he takes initiative in relationships. And that's when we look at John chapter 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. No one could choose to be Christ's friend, right? He alone takes that initiative. He didn't choose us as his friend because anything worth worthy in us or because of our good works, the only reason why he chose us, or the only reason we can be have a relationship with the Lord is because of what he did for us. Our only role was to respond to the Holy Spirit's conviction of our sin and cry out for mercy and for salvation. And then we also have the revolutionary effect on our lives. Okay, so this is where we look at, this is my commandment, 
that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are my friend if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for a slave does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. When we were saved, our lives were completely changed, right? Our lives were completely changed, and we were given a new heart and a new spirit. And now we can relate to, to Christ in an entirely different fashion as his intimate friends. You and I are his intimate friends. And this transformation is characterized by a life of obedience, a life of sharing you know, your fruits of the Spirit that we talk about almost every Sunday. His commands and Christ-like love for one another is really kind of what that obedience is all about. And then he also keeps his promises and, and, and he has this, he reveals a divine truth where he said, I've, I've called you friends because all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So while Jesus was with his disciples, he revealed he revealed divine truths from his father that couldn't have been known any other way, right? And these revelations weren't given to everyone, but only those he called friends. And so after Christ's ascension, the Holy Spirit brought to mind all that Jesus told his disciples. And now they are recorded in the Bible for all of us to know. And to study. And then also, too, in, in, in really developing that personal friendship with us, he challenges us. He says, I chose you, I appointed you, that you would go and you would bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. The fruit Christ wants us to bear as his friends are eternal qualities of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control, you know, and, 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 and good works that he's planned for us to do. In other words, he challenges us to become who he desires us to be and to accomplish what he has planned for us, what he has planned for us. Okay, so the kind of friend that Jesus is, okay, I'm going to rattle off all these. They're all a lot. The kind of friend that Jesus is. Number one, he accepts us as we are, but does, doesn't does leave us that way. Okay, so he, he accepts us with all of our faults, all of our problems. But he doesn't leave us that way. He fixes us, right? He has time for us, and he's never too busy. He talks to us through his written word. He listens to us when we pray. And when we're quiet, he forgives us and grants us his perfect record of righteousness. Forgiveness is so vital. And he, he understands us in our struggles and our weaknesses, in our times of great burden. He walks with us through our many trials and tribulations. He's available to meet our needs in every circumstance. He's open and he doesn't try to hide himself. He reveals himself in ways through his word and through other people. He's sensitive and he knows us better than we know ourselves. Just like I shared on Sunday with Jonathan, he encourages us the way that Jonathan encouraged David. He encourages us through life. This is a big one. He's patient and long-suffering with us in our personal battles, in our frailties, and guides us in our spiritual growth. And, you know, he has to be patient because, you know, we, we have this thing called free will. And so we like to go the other way, right? We don't like to say, yes, I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to do everything you know. We, we like to try to live for the world and do all the things that are out and about. And that's not right. So he's patient. He's waiting for his prodigals to come back. He's waiting for his, his 
his children to come back. He's a giver. Everything we have from him, everything that we have, whether it's money, whether it's home, whether it's this computer, all of this stuff is on loan by him. He is a giver. Everything we have is from him, including life itself. The breath that we take, the first breath every morning when we wake up. And then he touches us in our time of need through the hands of his people and his presence with us. I mean, through through the car accident that my wife and I just experienced, we experienced this specific thing. Friends in an outpouring in our time of need through the hands of his people and his presence with us. I mean, he's always truthful. He'll never deceive us. He's always faithful. Whatever he says, he will do. He's committed to us. And as I said, he keeps his promises. He confronts us when we sin because he loves us so much. He desires the best for us. Sometimes that means that, that we must rearrange our plans, our plans, they're not our plans, in order to make them like his. They're actually his plans, right? He loves us unconditionally. There's nothing that we have to do to earn our merit, his love. He gave us his life. He prepared a place for us in heaven. He's going to spend eternity with us. Isn't that beautiful? Do you have a difficult time seeing Jesus as your friend? What, what misconceptions keep you from enjoying this intimate relationship that he, that he died to give you? What aspects of his friendship bring you encouragement and strength during the seasons of your life? You know, I, I will say that for me, again, it's, it's, it's been the outpouring of great prayer and the outpouring of friends checking on my wife and I and checking on Angelina and her, uh, her improvement after the car accident. I mean, nothing is scarier than seeing your wife unresponsive as a level two trauma. And, and, and some of you may not know that, but that's one of the reasons why we didn't have prayer meeting. Um, you know, and, and, and to, to, to be able to see those fruits are amazing. And so, friends, tonight, did this message inspire you to, to do something, to make a change? Is the Holy Spirit moving in you? Are you dealing with something? I mean, you're not here by mistake tonight. You're not listening 19 minutes in by mistake tonight. You didn't sit down to watch this message and just kind of scroll through. Jesus put you right here. Maybe you have a heavy burden on your shoulders. If God is stirring something in your heart right now, respond. Let me know. The Bible says that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you are saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So make a decision right now to seal this message on your heart. There are a lot of ways that you can respond to this burden, this stirring that's going on in your heart. You can come to church on Sunday, and you can come forward, and you can talk to me, or you can talk to another pastor in our church, or you can talk to uh, a, a couple of the female, uh, like Norma Sanders or some others that, that would be able to guide you and to help you. We want to know what God's doing in your life. And, you know, do you have troubles on your heart or do you feel convicted by this prison of sin in your life? If you're ready to follow Jesus or if you still have questions, we would love to talk with you. But you know what? You don't even have to come forward at church. You could send me a direct message right here. You could send me an email at donaldmast at gmail.com. Or you can go through our church website, a1sbc.org. 
we would love to pray with you. We would love to pray for you. And we would love to, to talk with you about how to have this personal friendship with Jesus. So friends, as I we, we do on prayer meeting Wednesday, it's called prayer reading for a reason. And so let's go ahead and turn to the Lord in prayer. And I encourage you to take out a pen and write down the folks on our prayer list tonight. That way you can continue to pray for them because pray for them because prayer is so powerful. Prayer can move mountains. Prayer can change the world. So will you join me tonight in prayer? God, thank you for Jesus and for the wonderful salvation that you have given us in him. We ask for your blessings tonight as we pray and we share our many burdens and we come to you to pray for our lost and our dying world. And we thank you for this direction that you've given us and your assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, Lord God, we do pray tonight for those who are sick. We ask that you pour out your love, your comfort, your peace, and your healing for all of our church family and friends who are dealing with medical issues tonight, who are sick, who are fatigued. You are the great physician. Give our medical wisdom, our, 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 our medical staff great wisdom. Give our sick and their families ease, calm, and hope as you work and you mend them, Lord. Lay your hands on them and be with. Lord, be with Rick and Heather Miller. Her brother-in-law, his name is Tom Strong. He's, he's going to have open heart surgery soon, Lord. Please put a hedge of protection around him, Lord. More importantly, also help to bring peace and calm. Help. Lord, by, by, by touching him with your hands, Lord, by healing him, Lord, by giving the doctors wisdom, Lord, to be able to do what they need to do. Tonight, also play, pray for Joyce Henson. She is the 85-year-old aunt of Gwen Fisher, who's had the flu, and she's been in and out of the hospital in Hanover, New Hampshire. Pray for Gwen, too. She had the flu a while back, and she's finally back on the mend. Tonight, pray for Cookie DiStefano and her sciatica pain. I also ask for prayers for my wife, Angelina, as she's still recovering from the auto accident a few weeks ago. I pray for Vincent Mucle. Lord, please touch Vincent. He's dealing with some flu-like symptoms. He also needs rest, Lord. Tonight, we pray for Thaddeus Stump as he's dealing with throat cancer. And, and, and Lord, you are the, the great physician. Pray tonight for Daryl to get on that heart transplant list and, and, and pray for Dave and Linda. And, and, and Linda has been having, she's had the flu. She's had, she's been sick since around Thanksgiving, Lord. Lord, also pray for our friend Tyler. Guide him with his business and guide him with his family and give him wisdom. Pray tonight also for Holly and Warren McGee and their family, their kids. Tonight, Lord, we lift Rose Murrow to you, Lord. Uh, she's dealing with some health issues tonight. Pray for her and her family. Pray for Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family, Pastor Paul, and for Cindy's daughter and her grandchildren, and pray for Renata. Be with Aaron Baumeisel, Daquan, and the Baumeisel family. Be with the Hoover family. Pray also for tonight for Tim and Mari Davis. I know Tim is dealing with some health issues, and Mari is as well. Also keep their son in prayer, Jose. Tonight I pray for my friend in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Rodrigo. Tonight we pray for Peach and her family, Rosie and Jimmy and Marlene and Alexis and our grandson, Hazen. We pray for Gwen Fisher and her daughter, Olivia. Tonight, we pray for Brother Anthony English and his wife, Polly. We pray for the entire Mucle family, Lillian, baby Lorenzo, Castro, and Oakland. We also pray for the DiStefano family, Robert, Liz, Cookie, Norma, the entire family. We pray for our friends at the First Baptist Church of Seward. 
Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller, and his family, his wife Heather, and the kids. We lift up Lawrence Ristler and his family. Lord, I lift up my family, my wife, Elliot, Becca, and also the entire Miller family in Texas. Pray for the Baptist Resource Network, for Dave Ludwig, Kent Hunt, and the team. Also pray for New Hope Baptist Church, the Connemaw Valley Baptist Association. I pray for my mom and dad tonight. I pray for traveling mercies this week, as many people will be traveling. I know my son will be traveling uh, with Becca here over the weekend. So give them traveling mercies, Lord, as we know that uh, travel and flight right now are very, very tough. I pray that you pour out your spirit and bring answers to our prayers. I also pray for those families who, you know, those folks who have been watching weekly that, that are shut-ins who we may have missed tonight. Lord, you know their names, you know their needs, and we are thankful for all of your blessings. And Lord, tonight we do pray for our city and for our community and for our local and national leaders, our court system, CYS our fire, our police, our EMS, and I pray for our schools and our school teachers. People have wandered so far away from the word of God and so far away from the cross. I pray that you will open their hearts to you. And Lord, we pray tonight for our military families and for those in harm's way. Bless them and their families. Keep them safe as they defend and protect. And we pray for our neighborhoods around our church around Blair County, around Penn State Altoona. Most of all, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all in our community, in our country, and in our world to you and your message for salvation. You are where we find true peace and true love and true hope. We praise you, Lord, for all of the prayers that you have answered. And God, we love you and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So in closing... I invite you, I welcome you, I encourage you to come to Altoona First Southern Baptist Church at 903 North 4th Street, okay? We can see you this Sunday, 1045, for singing, for fellowshipping, getting to know people, networking, learning, and, and praising our Lord and thanking God. And you come as you are. You don't need to dress up. Come as you are. Bring a friend. Bring a neighbor. We'll have coffee and donuts, and, and I think we have coffee cakes and all sorts of fun stuff. I think we even have some fruit. So I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to thank you tonight for praying with me, and I will continue to pray for each and every one of you, and I hope that you will continue to pray for me and my family and our church. Altina First Southern Baptist Church. In Jesus' name, have a great rest of the week. God bless you.